Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about Escherichia coli, or E. coli for short, with a focus on pathogenic strains, serotypes O, K, and H antigen. E. coli is a gram-negative, rod-shaped bacterium that appears light red on the gram-staining method since gram-negative bacteria do not retain the crystal violet stain due to the presence of only a very thin peptidoglycan cell wall sandwiched between the inner and outer membrane. It is a facultative anaerobe, meaning that it can make ATP by aerobic respiration if oxygen is present, but is capable of switching to fermentation if oxygen is absent. The organism is commonly found in the lower intestine of warm-blooded organisms and can comprise nearly 1% of the local microbiota in humans. Most E. coli strains are harmless, but some, such as O157H7, can be quite pathogenic. The organism was discovered in 1885 by Theodore Escherich and originally called Bacterium coli. After several rounds of reclassification, it was eventually assigned to a newly created genus Escherichia. The organism is generally non-pathogenic with uh, a few known serious outbreaks, one of the worst of which was recorded in 1996 in Wisha, Scotland, where E. coli food poisoning killed 20 people. Other known outbreaks include the 1993 Jack in the Box E. coli outbreak where the pathogenic strain O157H7 caused the death of four children, leaving 178 other victims with permanent injuries. One of the most impactful E. coli outbreaks of our recent past was the Germany O104H4 outbreak, which caused a high frequency of serious complications including bloody diarrhea and hemolytic uremic syndrome. It is now believed that the original cause of the contamination was a variety of fresh vegetables contaminated with the organism. Most E. coli strains are non-pathogenic. However, virulent strains can cause urinary tract infections, gastroenteritis, hemorrhagic colitis, Crohn's disease, meningitis, as well as many other rare complications including hemolytic uremic syndrome, pyridonitis, pneumonia, and mastitis. The O157H7 strain can produce a Shiga toxin, an AB5 toxin that can cause destruction of red blood cells, clogging of the kidneys, and destructions of cells in the gut. In a fraction of patients, complications in the central nervous system can lead to strokes. Other bacterial factors are used to categorize E. coli strains such as the H antigen, which is a component of the flagella, the O antigen, which is the outer component of the lipopolysaccharide and encoded by the RFB gene, and the K antigen, which is derived from the bacterial capsule. Some K antigen strains can contribute to the formation of biofilm, which makes the organism particularly resistant to immune factors and antibiotic therapy. These strains are typically found in recurring upper urinary tract infections. The molecular biology of the disease varies from strain to strain. Enterotoxigenic E. coli use fimbrial adhesins to bind cells in the small intestine and produce two proteinaceous toxins causing effects similar to the cholera toxin and fluid secretion. Enteropathogenic E. coli use adhesins to bind the host cell causing actin rearrangement followed by invasion eliciting an inflammatory response in fluid secretion. Enteroinvasive strains cause symptoms similar to shigellosis and result in invasion beyond the mucosal cell layer. And finally, the adherent invasive strains are capable of replicating intracellularly and avoiding the immune system, eventually resulting in Crohn's disease. E. coli spreads via the fecal oral route. As such, environmental factors such as access to clean water, contaminated food, and general sanitation play a significant role in disease transmission. Age and the general state of the immune system also play a significant role in disease progression and pathogenesis. Immunocompromised individuals are, as an example, at a significantly higher risk of serious complications from the adhesive invasive strain phenotype. 
Since ureopathogenic E. coli is responsible for nearly 90% of urinary tract infection, physiological difference between male and female urethra increase the likelihood of infection for women by nearly 14 times when compared to men. Finally, genetic factors, such as the presence of a specific P blood group antigen on erythrocytes in uroepithelial cells, dictates an individual's susceptibility to Shiga toxin produced by several E. coli strains. This antigen receptor is encoded by a gene on chromosome 22. The current treatment strategies include fluoroquinolones, azithromycin, and rifaximin antibiotics. In addition, a broad range of antibiotics ranging from amoxicillin to aminoglycosides are effective against E. coli infections of various strains. Supportive treatment includes replacement of fluids and electrolytes lost during dehydration, and preventative treatments are focused on hand washing, improved sanitation, access to clean drinking water, cooking of foods, and pasteurization of beverages. Antibiotic microbial resistance is a serious topic of concern. If the trend continues, it is anticipated to surpass cancer as the leading cause of attributable death by 2050. While E. coli's resistance to antibiotics is not as serious as, for example, MRSA or VRSA, the abuse of antibiotics and their use as growth promoters in animal feeds has significantly increased the order of adaptive mutations by some estimates a thousand times greater than the natural baseline. E. coli is additionally naturally resistant to many antibiotics that are effective against specifically gram-positive organisms, and biofilm-producing strains have been implicated in recurring cases of UTI. As an example, around 50-60% to 60 of women in the developed world experience UTI in their lifetime, and 27% of these UTIs are found to recur at least once. This recurrence is at least in part attributable to biofilm producing strains, which provide a natural coating of protection against antibiotics by limiting diffusion. In addition, the recently identified resistance to penicillins and cephalosporins via the production of an extended spectrum beta lactamase in several E. coli strains as well as the NDM1 metallobetalactamase producing strain found in India and Pakistan that affords the organism resistance to carbapenem is particularly worrisome. Since E. coli encompasses an enormous population of bacteria with a high degree of genetic and phenotypic diversity, many unanswered questions in the various fields studying E. coli remain. Taxonomic reclassification is potentially desirable, and several new classification schemes have been proposed. The role of E. coli in colorectal cancer, as an example, has been suggested, but not broadly evaluated to reach a conclusion and definitively rule in or out the organism. The efficacy of phage therapy to target specifically pathogenic strains of E. coli is promising but not fully clinically evaluated in prospective multi-center clinical trials within the U.S. Prior use in the Soviet Union has shown potential, but is currently commercially limited to only a few former republics due to cost and production complexity. Finally, effective low-cost vaccines are currently under development, several of which showed positive safety profiles in early clinical studies. To date, however, no E. coli vaccine is approved for human use, in the US by the FDA. Thank you all for your time and hope you enjoyed this brief overview on E. coli.